and um, today I decided that I'm gonna build myself a frame jig to put these guys together. And what I did is I took a measurement from here to here, and that'll be my length for the side pieces. And then I measured this part out because I'm gonna make a cutout in my sides to put boards through. Now when I go ahead and talk today, I'm gonna to do it in a SAE system of measurement, but I'll put my description, the metric conversions. So all those that use metric instead of SAE, like us weirdos here in the US, I guess, you'll know what I'm giving for measurements. All right, safety glasses, always a must. I'm gonna go ahead and get started. I'm gonna make two boards at 14 inches, two boards at 17 and 13 sixteenths, and then I'm gonna rip them down. To... All right, let's get started on the miter saw. All right, I'm first gonna be using my straight edge here. You go 14 inches. This is an old piece of scrap board I had from making my boxes. I'm gonna go 14 inches this way and make my mark. Get the straight edge out of my way. Square. Make my mark there. Now that I got my mark, I can go ahead and make my cut. Now since this is exactly on 14. I'm going to put make it to my blade is just on this side of my mark. Right there looks good enough. Now, let's go ahead and make my second one. Just line it up flat with edge to edge. I'll take my pen here, make another mark, just like that. I'll do the same thing. I'll cut off this side of the line I made. Let's see if you can see that line. There's the line I'm talking about. I'm going to cut on this side of it and put the blade basically right along the edge of the line. Good idea to make sure that that is clear of any wood particulates. Okay. All right, those are the short sides. Now we're gonna go ahead and cut the two long sides. Look at my measurements here again. I need to go 17 and 13 sixteenths, which on this straight edge here, I bought this one specifically because you have all your little marks. Makes it real nice. Let's go ahead and line up the straight edge there. 17 and 13 sixteenths. Right there. Get this out of the way. Take my mark with my square here. I'm going to bring it in. I'll do like I did earlier. Put the blade on this side of my mark. And we'll make our cut. There's one piece. I'll just put it right back on here. I'll line her up, take my pen. Made my next mark. Let's get that one cut. got a miter saw like I do here and you don't have a miter stand invest in one I love it it's made everything a heck of a lot easier in my life for woodworking pick this up at Harbor Freight for a little over 100 bucks and it's it's awesome I've stacked I don't know 10 1 by 12 by 10 footers on here and didn't even 
couldn't even tell you had weight on it. None of the metal flexed or nothing. All right, let's get back to making this. All right, I've got my distance from the blade to my fence here set up to seven inches. I could go off just the measurements that came with this, but it's just slightly off, so I went ahead and used my tape measure to measure the inside distance of here between the blade and the fence to give you my seven inches. Let's go ahead and cut this. Now remember, push the wood all the way through. Don't reach across the blade when it's turning and cutting. Bad idea, bad juju. I do is I'm going to take my long pieces, we'll measure from here to here, the distance I need, and we'll cut out a chunk. I'm probably just going to use the uh, pieces I cut off my bee boxes that I made a video or so ago to use as my bars that come across. And then we'll put it all together. All right. Now what I'm going to do here is, as you can see in the frames here, the sidebars, see that distance there and there there's a big old gap. Well, I want my board that I'm going to put through to kind of go like right in this area, right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark on the each deal, and on the inside of each of them sidebars. It's a little sharpie right here. That'll give me where I need to make my cut up. Right there, I'll kind of just come up here. I'll cut out a chunk right there. Now let's mark it on the next board. Anything you can do to make your life a little easier, it's worth it. If you can make a jig for yourself, do it. Now, it is probably beneficial to go ahead and make a few of these by hand, just so you know how it goes together. Now, like I did in my other video, I got a crown staple here, crown staple here, that way it has I guess resistance against pulling apart, but also put some wood glue in there. Type Bond 3 works really well. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and make my lines coming up on each side. I'll just do that real quick. Get my square here. Put it right against there. Do the same thing with this one. There's those. Now what I'll end up doing is I'll be measuring three quarters of an inch over because that'll be the width of my board. You could also do it. Might as well cheat again, right? Get your line here. Butt your board up against the edge of that line. Make a mark. Come in with your square. Come up with it. There you go. You do the same thing with this one over here. Let's go ahead and butt it up against that line. Make a mark. Come up. Now, I'm gonna take these ones here. These are the long pieces that were ripped off of here. I'm gonna make my mark up here. Should give lots of depth for holding them uh, bars of the frames, the tops and sides. Well, it's gonna be holding the side bars, but it'll kind of help steady it better for when putting everything together. I'll just do that on each one of these and then we'll cut them out. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and make my marks on my other board. I'll be right back. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and do this with my bandsaw just because I have one. Once again, I, was, I got it from Harbor Freight. 
I'm just gonna follow my lines. I'll make a line cut here, cut here, and then I'll kind of curve into it to cut that chunk out. I'll do the same and just keep going until I get it square. You could also go ahead and take a saw, just make a bunch of cuts down there, and then take a chisel and smack it here and break that whole piece out. But I'm gonna use my bandsaw, be a little nicer. All right, here we go. Now, if you've got a small bandsaw like me where you can't really sit there, make this cut, you know, going this way and then get in over here to make this one. What you do is you do both cuts, right? Then you're gonna take this, so you can cut this side, flip one over, line them up on the edge, so they're gonna be equal. Then you're gonna go ahead and make your outline, your trace right in here, which is what I did right there. All right, let's make these next two cuts. is kind of uh, situated where they need to be. Now what I'm going to do is we're going to take glue, we're going to go along the outside edges here. Once again, I'm using my Type Bond 3. I, mean, I don't think you generally need to use the Type Bond 3 for this one because it's you're going to be inside the whole time when you're using it. But it's a darn good glue, so that's why I'm going to go ahead and use it. Square it up right there. Make sure you're getting aligned all the way. I'm gonna hit it with my brad nailer. Keep your fingers away from where you think. Well, you know, you'll know the length of your nails you're putting in. So make sure they're far enough away because brad nails have been known to veer. Just like that, that one's secured. I went ahead and did three, mainly just because. No real reason, but just because. All right. Let's put that other side on. It's gonna again go it up with a tight bond here. Thin little stream of it. Doesn't need to be a lot, it's good stuff. Good and squared up right there on the edge. Square this side up. Now, I think I'm going to make this nice and sturdy. I'm going to switch out my brad nails. Let's go to these one inch crown staples, the same ones I'm gonna use for my frames. Let's go to these little spots right here. That way you're catching those little flimsy pieces of fruit from your sides. adding a little more support than just the glue. So here it is. Oh, come back here. So there's my bars like that. 
All right. Should work just fine and dandy. Now I just realized I screwed up when I made these. I made them a little bit too narrow. I need to go wider one more of these. I wanted to do a 10 frame jig, but this turned into a nine frame jig. It'll still work. It'll just take a little bit more time making all my frames. All right, now let's go ahead and test her out. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get all these, kind of make them even in my hands. Take my tight bond, I'm gonna go ahead and goober it up there, right there, do it on the sides. That way that glue will get to that top bar. Let's go ahead and put, place it in. Now you can go ahead and probably do it, glue it individually one at a time. We're making a jig to try to save time, so why not glue the mass of them in your hand, then place them in. So you can just keep rocking. Grab my other mass of nine sidebars. Go ahead and glue the sidebar parts like that. In. I know there's a million of these videos online showing people how to use these. I wanted to make a video on me building mine. That way y'all could kind of get a good idea how they're supposed to be. And you can scale this to however big you want. If you want to make it to where you're doing a thousand frames at once, you can do it. I'll just take our top. Place it in. Now this is going to be much faster doing one at a time I believe I get my fingers to work for me make sure you're putting the slit facing down because that's where your frame your inserts are gonna be all right now I'm gonna go ahead and take a little piece of scrap lumber Give her a good old tappy tap. Make sure those are sitting down where they need to be. Now let's take our crown stapler. Have some fun on uh, flipping this whole thing over. You could also make it deeper if you want. Now, this is the longer part where you take a little bit of glue and dab it on each one. These tight bond bottles are really nice, they enable you just to do a little dollop there. I'm putting the glue on the sides of the cut, like I said earlier, so those bars will actually get a decent amount there. Now, here's the magic. Let's go ahead and slide these out. That's the magic of just doing the sidebars in the box like that. So that way, you 
come in with your inserts. Let's go ahead and put them in. Now these are the Man Lake frames and Man Lake inserts, and these are pre-waxed. And I think they're pretty cool. You can actually feel the wax, you can smell the wax. It's great. That'll really help out with getting the bees to start on it. I don't have the money personally right now to buy a bunch of wax and kind of cheese grate it onto the frank onto the inserts here. Alright. Let's get the bottom bar in place. And just keep going along with it. In hindsight, maybe put the inserts in one at a time. <laughs> But remember to put the inserts in. That's the big one. Next time I do these with this jig, I'm going to put the inserts in one frame at a time. But just like that, I flopped it over where I can't get it with my big meat claw hands here, sausage fingers. Probably would have helped also if I had it actually in the frame instead of sitting on the table saw like I just did. Seems like this is the longest part of this part with the jig, but still got to think. Even though this part's taking a little bit of time, it's still going to be a heck of a lot quicker and making them all individually. And just like that, I'm gonna go ahead and push down on all these guys. Let's try to make them even there. Okay, now let's run the staples in. There we go. Now, let's see here. Let's go ahead and just flip her over. We got a frame made. Now that is definitely nice. Jig. All right. If you liked the video, I gave you some good ideas, maybe helped you out. Give me a like and a subscribe.
leave a comment if you have any other ideas or whatnot. I'm thinking I'm probably gonna go through and put four more staples in each one of these like I did on those ones I handmade, just in the side here. I know the glue is awesome, it works great. And they say it's supposed to really help for when you're prying these out of the box to resist that pull apart, but I'm gonna put staples in anyway, just for a little extra protection on that aspect. Like I said, if you liked what I did, I gave you some ideas, maybe helped you out some. Like and subscribe, I'll put the metric conversions of this nine frame box jig, the frame nine frame jig here in the comments. All right, catch y'all later.